Hello YouTube, Big Apple here today. Finally got my old camera back. I didn't know where it was for a while and I finally found it. So normal lighting, a good viewing area, and good sound is finally back. So today, I'm going to talk about direct gas impingement versus gas piston. And you've probably heard a lot of times about AR-15s being gas powered and that doesn't mean that there's a CO2 cartridge hidden somewhere in here. <laughs> it means that the gun helps feed the next round in the whole system by using some of the gases and the pressure generated from that cartridge going off. So um, I'll start off too by saying that most pistols are below back operated, although there are a few that are direct gas or gas piston. Two off the top of my head I can think of. Uh, the Desert Eagle, I believe, is a direct gas impingement design. And the H&K P30, I'm pretty sure it's gas piston, but I could be wrong. Uh, but for the most part, like this Beretta 92, standard blowback operation, meaning round is fired, and the pressure generated and the motion generated from that bullet actually, uh, from the case, actually drives the whole action back, ejects one round, and loads up the next one. So there's no, there's no tapping into the inside of the barrel here, and you'll know more about what I mean uh, you know, about that once I go into talking about these rifles. So in most 22s, you can tell that most of them are blowback operated because of how light the recoil spring is. It really doesn't need much, you know, <laughs> and it really doesn't need much else to happen in the 22 for it to operate. So they just put a really light recoil spring in there and the power generated from that is enough to cycle the bolt. So first thing we'll talk about is direct gas impingement. Well, I'll talk the way through, my way through it and then I'll show you on this rifle. So after a round is fired, Quickly expanding gas pushes the projectile, which could be the bullet or a wad in a shotgun, out of the barrel, and a small amount of this gas goes into a hole in the bore at the gas block. This gas travels through the gas tube, into the gas key, and into the bolt. This drives the bolt carrier away from the bolt and causes it to cycle. So on this uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 15 right here, I'll tell you exactly what I mean with that whole deal. So, gas block is right up here. I don't know if you can see it well in this lighting. It's right up here inside this hole. You can see a little ridge there. And you can probably see that little, that little silver tube on the top right in there. You can see it good right there. That's the gas tube. So as the bullet's traveling down the bore this way, the hot gases go into the gas block here and up this tube. And you can see the two holes right there on the bolt carrier. That's where the gas comes out. So that's the bolt carrier. That little thing on the front is the bolt. So when the gas comes into here, the gas key is on the top of this bolt carrier. It might actually be easier if I just take it out and show you what I'm talking about. So, all right. Here's your bolt. That's your gas key on the top. So the gas comes into there in that gas key and goes here into the bolt carrier. It drives the bolt, which is that, away from the whole carrier. So it causes it to, it to expand really, really fast. And that force pushes the entire bolt carrier back. So it strips the cartridge out of the uh, chamber and it loads up another one from the magazine. That's how direct gas impingement works. And so now that I've uh, talked to you through that, through that whole process, I'll explain the uh, pros and cons of a DI system. Let me get this rifle back together. Okay. So the pros of a, of a DI system, it's lightweight. It's very basic. It's a low impact system, and you'll know what I mean whenever I talk about gas piston with that. Um, they say it's inherently more accurate because there are less vibrating parts actually attached to the barrel. I don't really know how much I buy into this because if you watch Military Arms Channel, you see he has an LWRC Reaper, which is a gas piston AR-10, and he shoots you know three quarter inch, half inch groups all day. So I don't really know how much I buy into that. Maybe DI rifles are just inherently more accurate, but I don't know. Um, there's fewer movie par moving parts, and it's more affordable. So there's less manufacturing involved, cheaper to make. And what are the cons? Well, you get a dirty bolt and receiver. The receiver can get really hot, and you can cause jammed cases. That usually is attributed from steel ammo. So the pros, it's really lightweight. Um, there isn't a whole lot here except that little gas block and that tube. And, uh, you know, there's just, it's really easy to design. There isn't a whole lot to it. It doesn't have to be, the gas tube doesn't have to be super duper strong. Uh, everything else doesn't have to be super duper strong. It's just a very basic system. Uh, it's lightweight compared to a uh, gas piston, which I'll show you more of that a little later. It's low impact, and I'll show you more on that later with gas piston too. 
uh, accuracy, kind of just depends on the rifle. Uh, fewer moving parts, meaning this gas tube is one piece and this actually doesn't move. On the gas piston uh, rifle, you'll see that it actually does move. Um, and it's more affordable. So the majority of AR-15s that you're going to see around are going to be DI ARs. DI meaning direct gas impingement. So what are the cons? Well, you get a dirty bolt and receiver. So in here, in this bolt and in this receiver, it gets really dirty because all of those gases that are following that round and making the barrel dirty are actually going into this tube and coming back here under your receiver. Uh, a lot of newer AR manufacturers have made it to where uh, the bolt cycles reliably. It kind of, so it's sort of self-cleaning, sort of self-lubricating, but they've done a really good job. I watched a test, uh, I read about a test recently where they fired 10,000 rounds out of uh, a Bushmaster, uh, a Federal 556 out of a Bushmaster, and it fired all 10,000 rounds without a failure. So uh, modern, modern production has really helped because the first versions of the M16 or the AR-15 in Vietnam, they had a lot of jamming issues. So they've really, really come a long way with it. Um, this can cause the receiver to get hot. I mean, like just like I was saying, all these gases behind this round are coming back here in your receiver, so it's gonna get really hot. And it can cause jam cases, and I've seen this uh, numerous times, and it's happened to me. So what do I mean it can cause jam cases? Well, when that gas pressure builds up in here and it, put, and it goes into here and it pushes this bolt forward and pushes the bolt carrier back, it's actually pushing that steel case into there. And since steel cases have a lacquer finish on them and they don't expand as well as brass and they don't create that good of a seal, you can actually have that lacquer uh, uh, finish or like the polymer coating on steel cased ammo actually act as glue and it'll stick here in your chamber. And you usually have to push a, a cleaning rod through the end of this to actually tap it out. It usually isn't that hard, but you won't be able to retract the bolt if that extractor sticks on it. So those are the ups and downs of a DI system. If you want it to be really reliable and you want a basic system that's been proven, get a good, uh, a good AR-15 from a good manufacturer and DI should probably work fine. Just know that you're going to be doing a lot of work cleaning it. So now we're going to move on to gas piston, which my Bushmaster ACR here is gas piston. And I'll be doing a review on this after I shoot it more. I've only shot it a little bit. So um, gas piston, here's how it works. A lot of this is the same as DI, you'll see that. After a round is fired, Quickly expanding, uh, expanding gas pushes the projectile out of the barrel. A small amount of this gas goes into the hole in the bore with the gas block. This drives a piston rearward, which impacts the surface on the bolt carrier and causes the action to cycle. So to make it easier for you to see, and because this thing is modular and very easy to do, I can actually take this whole handguard off here, and you can see the gas block there. So gas is coming to the gas block right here, and you have your little gas regulator here and that causes this piston to go back. You can see the spring in there and that whole rod. That's your operating rod right there. And that actually drives all the way back into the top of this bolt carrier. And I'll actually take this bolt carrier out to show you how that works too. So the surface that, that the piston actually impacts is right here. You can see a little kind of a little circle looking deal there. And that's from that piston smacking against it and that drives this whole thing backwards. And as you can see another difference in this versus the DI is your locking lugs here on the actual bolt. This is the bolt carrier, that's the bolt. It's spring loaded. There's a spring between, uh, you know, going around the firing pin here between this. So that is one difference because there's no gas coming in here to make them expand like there is in DI. So it has to be putting pressure on it. Um, the, See, the, the pros of a gas piston system, and I guess I'll talk about this before I even put it back in my rifle, very, very clean. That really is the probably the, the biggest pro of a gas piston system. So with a gas piston system, all of that junk isn't actually coming back here into the receiver. It's staying up from here at the gas block. Now granted, the gas block does get a little bit dirty, but you're also not bringing all that stuff back in here. So that also helps the bolt stay cold. So I have that there. Um, you have an adjustable gas block. This little regulator is adjustable here. And uh, that, that also helps it to run steel very well. Uh, AK-47s are a gas piston operated system. So uh, that just kind, of, just kind of lends itself to better reliability with steel. So uh, as you can see, I fired probably, probably 200 rounds out of, out of this bolt right here. Maybe a little bit less with this bolt. Uh, you know, since since I've cleaned it up a while back. And you can tell that bolt is still really clean. It's surprising how clean this whole system really stays and how cool it stays. Um, it's 
This is the first gas piston rifle I've ever had, and I really, really wanted one. And uh, after researching, I went with this ACR. But regardless, gas piston systems stay really clean and they stay really cool. After you fired 50 rounds uh, out of your AR, if you touch that bolt carrier, it's probably gonna be really hot unless you spaced out those shots. But with a gas piston system, it's probably not gonna be that hot and you should just be able to touch it. It should be cold to the touch. What are the cons of a gas piston system? Well, it's heavy, it can be complex. You have a high impact. Remember I was telling you about how it smacks the bolt carrier, so it's higher impact. Uh, you have more moving parts, and that's because some, uh, some manufacturers, they really have to have, uh, and that also goes in here, proprietary. They have proprietary gas systems, and some of them actually have multiple operating rods here. So it can get complex. You can have a lot of moving parts. Um, it's expensive, usually, since most of them are proprietary. Um, it can cause muzzle jump, which I noticed shooting this from a bench to sight in the same point. Uh, the muzzle would actually kind of kind of jump up a little bit after each shot. Obviously not a lot because it's only a 5.56, 5. but I was still getting some muzzle jump and that didn't happen with an AR since most of that's going straight back. Um, and supposedly you get harder wear on the locking lugs, which are those little lugs on the front of the bolt, because in that one it actually pushes on it to drive them apart, whereas on this one it kind of just pulls it straight out. So uh, I don't really know if that really is true, if there's harder wear on the locking lugs, but I thought I'd mention it. So, which one should I pick, Big Apple? Which one do you think I should use? What would work for me? Well, in the end, it really comes down to personal preference. With ARs, I think DI systems can run very well. Like I was saying, if you go from a you know, respectable manufacturer, you get something like this Smith & Wesson M&P 15, which I think is really nice. The DI system should probably not give you any problems. It's just gonna be dirtier and hotter. I prefer gas piston due to how clean the systems run. Uh, after buying this uh, Bushmaster here, it really has impressed me how clean it stays and how little work I have to put into cleaning the bolt carrier and cleaning it up after. It's, uh, it's pretty impressive. So this is Big Apple. If you have any questions about gas piston systems or DI systems, just post in the comments. Thank you.